I would now like to introduce our next speaker, Ralph Bierkoff. Again, Ralph, thank you for joining us so early in the morning um, and coming to us from the beautiful sunny islands in the Caribbean, I believe uh, Tobago, um, if I'm not mistaken. And um, yeah. Ralph is the developmental lead of Alchemy Renewables and Geoframe Energy Partners. Um, he is going to speak to us today about what they are doing for geothermal powered NA nearshore data centers in the Eastern Caribbean. Take it away, Ralph. Thank you, Bonnie. And uh, yes, yeah, a warm welcome from uh, the island of Tobago. Um, so um, we've listened to some speakers talk about the digital transformation. And, um, you know, underneath all of that, um, we really need to focus on the infrastructure of data storage and energy everything starts with energy. Um, in the Caribbean here, uh, we are uh, very fortunate that we sit on a massive amount of geothermal energy in, in the Eastern Caribbean, particularly in this, uh, in this basin. Um, if you can move to the next slide, please, Alina. Yeah, go ahead. So what um, we're seeing uh, in my background, you know, over the several decades, I was very much involved in data center site selection in North America. Um, and we're, we're really seeing a, a massive transformation towards the identification of, of power. Um, in, in my past experiences, data centers were looking at uh, expansion as a real estate issue. Um, where they could find buildings that could be converted or built uh, within a region that had uh, competitive and very strong energy grids to power their centers. Um, there were latency issues involved, of course, for financial services, uh, but the emphasis really was on expansion of uh, data center storage capabilities based on a real estate decision and to some extent the HR component. What we're seeing today with the, especially with the advent of AI is we're seeing a massive demand increase in data storage around the world. Um, and this slide just kind of emphasizes that um, we're, you know, we currently stand at about 10, 10 zettabytes of storage in 2023 uh, last year, and that's expended, ex expected to more than double uh, in the next uh, three years now. Um, and this is really based on the demand from the AI sector. Um, so we're seeing a lot of major users like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, uh, all of the big DC players now looking at site selection based on their power needs because the power uh, required to uh, sustain data storage systems for AI is uh, much higher than what was normally required for you know, data center power supply. Um, where we're now seeing that individual data centers are looking for three to 500 megawatts of, of base load power. Um, and it needs to be base load because you, you know, redundancy power systems are going to be very, very difficult to, to supply through, you know, generation, diesel generation or what have you. So um, we're now starting to see uh, these major DC users look at power supply around the world. Um, and if you go to the next slide, thanks, Selena. So what we're seeing now is these major DC users are looking at uh, base load power supply from nuclear and geothermal power to directly uh, generate power for their data centers. Um, scalable power, um, in, certainly in the terms of geothermal, and um, you know a, a massive amount of power supply, a dedicated power supply. So we're now seeing these companies uh, around the world looking at, and particularly this is a, a, a shot from the US in Utah, I believe, where um, uh, Google is, is working with a geothermal development partner and creating a geothermal energy plant uh, strictly for their own power needs. And we're seeing this more and more around the world. Um, so what, go, go ahead, Alina, next slide, please. So here in the Eastern Caribbean, um, we're sitting on a gold mine. Um, we have uh, 
confirmed resources of uh, somewhere in the area of 6,400 megawatts of power from these islands that you're listed here. Um, the interesting thing is that the, um, you know, we're working with utilities as well, of course, to convert their uh, oil and gas uh, generation, electrical generation to geothermal because it's an abundant resource and they could literally overnight transform to 100% geothermal power, baseload power uh, for their utility requirements. But if, if you add up all of these islands, uh, including Martinique and Guadeloupe, you're less than 500 megawatts um, of total peak demand for these islands, which is leaving us with a 5,800 megawatt surplus of power. Now that surplus power could be used in many different ways. It could, we could interconnect other islands that do not have geothermal resources. Like we could go from uh, St. Kitts and Nevis or Montserrat to Antigua, for instance, and supply them with all the power through an undersea um, cable system. And we could literally connect all of the islands in the Caribbean and, and they could um, take power from this surplus. Um, there's obviously the opportunity for green hydrogen production. Um, which could happen in, you know, domestically in each of these islands. But one of the areas that we're focused on is trying to attract uh, major DC users to this nearshore environment um, and offering them this ability to connect to this uh, massive amount of surplus power. Um, in the past, the Caribbean region was not seen as a um, let's call it a safe place for for data centers. Data centers in the past, because of their the, the engineering um, of them were really trying to avoid any uh, locations that had seismic activity, volcanic activity, uh, hurricanes, et cetera. Uh, but the, the infrastructure engineering has now solved that problem. Uh, so they're, you know, uh, we're, we're trying to now look at, at uh, broadening the um, demand in the Caribbean. So the, the digital transformation process is going to require more and more storage capability. And that's why we're seeing this proliferation of uh, data centers all over the world. Um, the Caribbean has this opportunity to attract these uh, major users through this surplus power amount. And... Um, uh, you know, that's that's uh, our strategy at the moment and in, in trying to bring some of these major users down to the Caribbean. Next Thank slide, you. please. Ralph, I'm going to have to ask you to quickly wrap up. OK, so a couple of things that we can do. You're seeing power rates in the U.S. and California at 30 cents a kilowatt hour in the eastern uh, uh, U.S. At, at 23 to 25 cents a kilowatt hour because, you know, utility is trying to conserve their energy. What what geothermal power can do is, is two things. We can drive that price down here in the Eastern Caribbean to about 15 cents a kilowatt hour, and we can offer them a fixed rate term of 25 years with no increases. Um, and that goes to the utilities as well. Also, geothermal has the highest capacity rating, even higher than nuclear or hydroelectric power. So that's, uh, you know, it's a baseload power. Um, next slide, please. So, the, possible. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to go real quick through these last three slides, Bonnie, because these yeah. are absolutely critical. What okay. what they need is okay. network interconnectivity. This slide basically just shows that the fiber connectivity within the Caribbean now has advanced to the point where we can solve that issue. Next slide, please. Um, cooling obviously is a critical factor. Uh, there are now technologies that provide seawater cooling. We're surrounded by seawater. So cooling is again, um, an issue that's can be dealt with. And lastly, next slide, please. We have infrastructure solutions that are rapid deployment that are hurricane resistant, seismic resistant, and have a total air seal efficiency against volcanic dust, et cetera. Um, this is a, a photo of a project we did in West Texas for um, one of the cryptocurrency miners. Um, and that just shows you kind of what the uh, infrastructure is. Obviously, there are incentives, uh, concessions available from the islands to attract data centers. So this is uh, the program that we're involved with, and um, we're hoping to see some success in the very near future. Amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Ralph. And uh, yeah, it's so impressive how uh, to see how, how you're... Um, managing to to uh, tailor this dedicated power supply to digital transformation in the Caribbean and also how abundant the resources is if we uh, tap into them and harness them. So thank you so much for that uh, inspiring practical case. You're welcome. Thank you.